So at this point, I'm kind of, I've hit a brick wall. Um, maybe I've made a chip in it, maybe not. Um, I need to think about the broader context of the question because remember, this is not just a standalone question. This is part three of three. So could one, part one or part two help us? And the answer is, go back and have a look at part two. Write down the contrapositive of the proposition P. Gee, that's sticking out like a sore thumb, isn't it, right? Um, why would they ask us to tell us what a contrapositive is and then, then it just sort of disappears off into the night, right? Now, part three, I'll admit, and this is why I think a lot of the state missed this when they did this last year, part three doesn't give you a big like slap in the face clue. It doesn't say, hence or otherwise, prove blah, 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 blah. But the, the mere presence of part two, which doesn't seem to flow off of part one in any obvious way and, you know, like, they don't make it really, really clear in an explicit form how you're gonna use it in part three, but its mere presence should clue you into the fact that it might be useful. And the problem that I've emerged um, into here is that going from a KQ plus one expression, it's pretty hard to get to a K plus one expression, but the reverse is not true. And that's what the contrapositive does, right? It reverses the flow of logic. From A implies B, we get not B implies not. A. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this, this is the converse, right? And I'm going to write the contrapositive of the converse. Let me say that and I'm going to write it in really obvious colors, right? The contrapositive of the converse of P. That's what I'm after here. Right, because um, if I can get that right, it'll get the, the K plus one term is the one we can sort of manipulate, right? Um, I will have to do something with it because it's not divisible by three, so it's a little bit tricky, but I'll deal with that in a second. Um, and it will help me use the clue that part two is nudging us toward, okay? So, what am I required to prove? Uh, I don't need these brackets here, right? I'm required to prove, I'm gonna go not, uh, here we go, not a implies not B, because this is the converse, and I want the contrapositive of this. Not the contrapositive of P, the contrapositive of P's converse, okay? So I'm gonna go not A implies not B. So it's gonna look like this. If K plus one is not divisible by three, there's not A, then here comes not B, K cubed plus one is not divisible by three. And whenever I negate something, I like to make it very obvious, which is why you can see me using all caps for the word not, okay? This is what I wanna try and prove. So then the question that naturally springs from this is, well, I have to write some kind of statement, right? If I go back to part one, I could easily write a statement that goes with A. I'm trying to write a statement that goes with not A. What does it look like? What can I say about K plus one if it is not divisible by three. Well, I guess I could say, uh, let's just grab this, right? I could say, well, the negation of that could look like this, right? K plus one is not equal to three N. The problem with me is this, uh, not, this in equation, this thing that is not true, it's kind of hard to work with, right? Because I need to prove, I, I want to work from things that are true. This is not a proof by contradiction, right? I want to work from things that are true and then see how the logical implications flow from those, right? So rather than say something is not true, if k plus one isn't divisible by three, it can't be written in the form three n, but I can write it in some other forms, right? Here are my multiples of three in here. If I just fill this in and have a look at the rest of the numbers, right? If I have two and then four and five and then seven and eight, I can't write any of these numbers in the form three N, but I can write them in other forms, right? Say for example, um, four and seven, they're both bigger than a multiple of three, right? So they're of the form three N plus one, three N plus one, it's just a different n in each case. Uh, and in much the same way, if you have a look at my other not divisible by threes, they're all one less than a multiple of three. So two is a three n minus one type number, five is also a three n minus one type number, and so is eight. So I could write it like that, or I could say it's like three n plus two. 3n plus 2, these are all different ways to write all of the same kinds of not divisible by 3 numbers, okay? And every number that's not divisible by 3 will fall into one of these two categories. So that's what I'm going to use. This is sort of like a proof by exhaustion, a proof by looking at separate cases. So let's break it apart like so. I'm going to call this case 1 and case 2. 
If k plus one is not divisible by three, then I can say either k plus one will look like this, 3n plus 1, um, or k plus 1 will look like this. I'll go with the positive one because negatives hurt my brain. Okay, 3n plus 2, and in each of these cases, k and n are going to be integers, yeah? So what I want to prove, that's a terrible curly brace, let's fix that. There we go. What I want to show is that the kq plus 1 that goes with each of these cases is not divisible by 3. So we were trying to get to 3 times some stuff. Here I want to get to 3 times some stuff, plus a one or plus a two, because if I plus three, then I'm back to being divisible by three again, okay? So, I, I, if you've been following so far, you've actually got the hardest part of the logic down, but let's actually tie this up in a neat bow, right? Let's do case one first. I'm gonna subtract one from both sides, like so, and then I'm going to cube, because that will get me to the kq plus one that I'm after. So, oopsie daisy, this should be a 27n cubed. I'm now gonna add one to both sides, that gives me this. And hopefully you can see here, like this is the KQ plus one that I want to show isn't divisible by three. And this right hand side, sure enough, is not divisible by three. I can prove it. Here's the part that is divisible by three, that three lots of a thing. And then you just got this pesky plus one hanging out the end here, right? So that can't possibly be divisible by three. So that's it for case one. Let's have a look at case two. Uh, I'm going to pull the same trick. I'm going to subtract one from both sides. That gives me this. Um, I'm still going to cube because I still need a k cubed plus one eventually. Um, but I have to think a little more carefully when I'm doing this um, binomial expansion. So it's going to be, and tell me if I'm getting this right, I think it should be 27 n cubed, 27 n squared. Uh, this is going to be 9 n and then it's just a one on the end. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering where I got these coefficients from, it's that there's going to be one lot of the 3n term, all cubed, and then there's going to be three lots of uh, this squared and one of these, and then three lots of just one of these. So I'm climbing down my binomial um, coefficients there, um, but when you, when you multiply this by itself three times, you get the 27 there, um, you get two lots of the, or two What's the word I'm looking for? Lots is not right, that's multiplication. Uh, two exponents of that, and then you multiply by this binomial coefficient and so on. Um, you can do the expansion and prove to me whether that's right or wrong. Uh, I need to add one to both sides like I did before. So there comes that, and then I'm gonna be a little cheap just because I'm watching the clock. That's gonna be plus two. And just like before, I can pull out a factor of three from some of this line, but not all of it, right? I can say there's gonna be a nine n cubed, a 9n squared, and then a 3n, uh, and those that's all an integer, but then you've got this pesky plus 2 hanging around, so just like before, this is not divisible by 3. Okay, so what I've proven is this statement here, right, and this is the contrapositive. So I can say, since the not a implies not b statement, I just proved that that's true, like so, since that's true, I can say by the contrapositive that the contrapositive of this is true, right? And that's B, oopsie daisy, B implies A. In other words, that's the converse I was after. Um, B implies A by the contrapositive. So, uh, by the way, I, I should just add one more little fun fact, which is not necessary, but it's kind of cute. This thing that we just proved here, um, not A implies not B. This has a name as well. It's not the converse. It's the inverse, the contrapositive of the converse. Um, not part of the course, but you can see how it's been used. They just didn't give you the, the word inverse, they didn't call it that, but you still had to use it. Um, and it's obviously in the course because it got tested in last year's HSC.